It seemed that Christian sensed George's sorrow and remorse at this double tragedy. He was usually there on the rocks at sunset when George wandered up to sit for a while, to take stock of life. As soon as the official inquiry was over, Ace and John made their way from England and then by light plane from Nairobi. It was almost a year since they'd last seen Christian. They'd promised to return, and with Christian now having to assume leadership of the Pride, they felt that now was the moment. They thought, too, that George might welcome a couple of familiar faces. is always more interested to hear first what other people have been doing. But Ace and John were bursting with questions, especially after the stories they'd heard about the wild lands. How was Christian? Was he all right? George smiled. Wait until you see him. I think you have a big surprise in store. The camp had become comparatively luxurious, but there was no sign of Christian or the other lands. While Ace and John stayed on the rocks below, George went up the hillside in the direction he felt the lions might be. 5,000 miles is a long way to see a friend who perhaps could have forgotten them. Mona and Lisa, Christian's new friends, were with him as he plodded forward, showing no recognition. Christian hesitated. A once familiar face. Then... Introduction was unnecessary. It wasn't wild lions which were Christian's enemies at the moment, but the dreaded vultures. They posed a problem which intrigued Ace and John very much. Christian either had to suffer indigestion through eating the whole of his kill immediately, or he was continually provoked into chasing them off. It was good exercise, quite different from the games he played in England. This was a real lion's game, part of his education, part of growing up. reunion. It really was the good old days. Without all those tiresome words and exaggerations, 
that the passing of time permits to creep in. How seldom in life are we free enough just to sit, just to enjoy friendship? Mm. They had a year of Christian's life to learn about, a year of experiences they'd missed. But the old familiarity still survived. Not only could they sit quietly in the shade, but they found that through Christian, they were accepted by Mona, Lisa, and even Supercum. west coast of England, in a small zoo, live Christian's parents, Butch of Holland and Mary of Israel. They will probably spend all their lives here, unless they're sold to another zoo. This is where Christian was born and spent the first weeks of his life. That is, until he was sold to the London department store, where Ace and John first saw him. If you're not behind bars, life can always be an adventure. Christian, now king of the pride, runs the risk of injury or early death, but he has the chance of finding some happiness too. He's travelled from the wrong end of the King's Road in London to the start of the right road in Africa. Is it the right road for Christian? As yet, no one can say. While life continues, no one knows the end. Only fairy tales have endings. The story is about a the Christian the lion sold as a toy. Thank you very much for choosing this Born Free Foundation wildlife video. The Foundation strives to help wild animals in many countries, both in the wild and in captivity. And by buying this film, you have already made a contribution towards our work. Since I acted with my husband, Bill Travers, in the film Born Free, I've become more and more fascinated by wild animals and how they live and more and more aware of how we are changing and sometimes destroying the wilderness in which they live. These unusual and sometimes personal films, which make up the Born Free video collection, will, I hope, interest you, touch you and bring you pleasure. I'm sure that you share my belief in how important it is to protect the natural environment and the wild creatures that live in it. These films will show how each one of us can help do this and make a difference. <laughs>